Welcome to Python for Traders and Investors. Modern trading and investment is largely about data and their sheer quantity makes it necessary to build increasingly sophisticated systems for processing and extraction of useful information for the development of quantitative trading strategies. Obtaining reliable data will set us up for successful backtesting and analysis of our trading and investment ideas later on. First, we will learn how to retrieve and condition data so they can be used for quantitative analysis. In this first lecture, we will use basic APIs to access free, publicly available data sets. So let's get started. There are four data types that are commonly used for developing trading strategies. Historical and common price and volume data, news and sentiment data such as news articles or Twitter feeds, balance sheets and other accounting data, and finally, alternative data from satellites, government agencies or weather reports. They can be classified into two categories, structured and unstructured. Structured data often come in specific, well-known and widely used data formats, such as JSON, CSV and XML. These are delivered through data services like Quandl, Bloomberg or Thomson Reuters. Some of them are free and others are paid services. On the other hand, unstructured data, as the name suggests, usually lack a standard format, but they might still hold valuable information. Typical examples are news articles, images and spoken words. They are harder to process and organize than structured data. What is an API? API stands for Application Programmable Interface. For example, APIs can deliver price and volume data, either continuously for real-time market information or as a one-off block, for example, in the form of historical price data. Such data sets can be retrieved by either sending standardized requests over the internet to the data provider and waiting for a response data block that can be processed further or sending a one-off request and then receive continuous updates from the data source streamed to your computer. Let's look at the Yahoo Finance API, which is currently free to access and provides different types of financial data. The Pandas Data Reader package in Python provides us with standardized, easy to use access to Yahoo and other data APIs. Python packages are pieces of code that execute certain specific functions, such as connecting to APIs, where the inner workings of the code are hidden from us and only useful commands are exposed. If you don't have Panda Starter Reader installed, you can use the command pip install to download and install this package. This also applies to any missing packages you'd like to install in the future. Now that we have the package, in order to use it in Python, we need to import them first from a package repository which lives on the local computer. This process avoids overloading memory. Now press Shift Enter to execute the command in the code box. The Python interpreter will then import the package with all its functionality. If we make a mistake in our code, Python will provide us with an error message telling us the nature of the error and where it is located to make it easier to fix it. We can now use the getDataYahoo function to download market data through the APIs as demonstrated in the following line. It will return a piece of data and we need to assign an identifier to it in order to use it further. This is done through the equal sign. Note that in Python the equal sign is called assignment operator and it has a different meaning than the equal sign in mathematics. While an expression such as a equals a plus 1 is wrong in mathematics, it is perfectly valid in Python. Now our request returns a so-called data frame, which is a specific data structure that is heavily used in quantitative finance. It comprises columns with different types of data such as open, high, low, close and volume, also known as candlesticks, and assigns a timestamp to each row. This type of data is called a time series 
Since each point in time has distinct data values as opposed to other types of data that do not have a distinct temporal order. Let's look at functions that can help us get more information about the data we have just downloaded. The type function tells us the kind of data structure that is provided to us. Simple data types are strings, integers, and floating point numbers. These data types are often compounded in more complex data types, such as lists and arrays. The data frame we have received from our API call is a complex data type as well. It contains timestamps in the form of a datetime format, price data in the form of floating point numbers, volume data in the form of integers, and column names in the form of strings. In our data frame, these simple data types are arranged in lists and arrays for our convenience, which will be explained in more detail later. When we query the length of our data frame with len, Python will return the number of time steps in the series. In our case, we have data points for 2,492 days. Using the list function, we can also print the names of the columns in our data frame. Note that the timestamps are not classed as column. They are referred to as an index. You will have noticed the name pandas coming up several times. It is derived from panel data, and it is the underlying software package that handles data frame creation and operations. The pandas data reader package that translates the outputs from the APIs of numerous data providers into the pandas data frame format. It currently supports the sources listed below, which are mostly free. Python provides hundreds or even thousands of packages to users, and the double question mark operator helps us to get a better understanding of what the package provides under the hood. In this case, we can see the different high-level commands that the package contains, helping us to make better use of all its functionality. The double question mark operator can be applied to any available function, and here we apply it to the simple print function. The output provides us with the different inputs the print function can take, and the data type those inputs require. Well done! This time we learned about different data sources and how to access financial data APIs with Python. In the next video, we show you how to read data files such as CSVs. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you soon.